Hi, welcome to Scale. My name's David. I just want to say thank you very much for placing your order with us and we look forward to working with yourself and your team. So we've set this video up just to help you with the unboxing and setup guide of your machine so you can get on to using it right away. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching and we're going to take you on to the unboxing part of the process first. Step number one, you're going to remove the box from your pallet and then you're going to slice open the sellotape at the top and just open the flaps up and your machine will be revealed inside. The back of the machine is where the hopper square goes, so you're going to tip it onto its back to avoid damaging the computer at the front. So here we go, make sure that the flaps stay on the outside of the box and we're going to turn it all the way upside down and remove it once it's upside down. And the box lifts off nice and easy to reveal your machine. So step number two, in, on your pallet, you should have also received a second box containing your floor stand, your hopper, and your funnel for the machine. Whilst you've got it in the upside down position, I would recommend attaching the funnel by placing it between the two clips, lining it up with the hole, and then just attaching the clips onto the machine. I would then lift it onto its back to be able to lift it onto your floor stand in order to remove the transit bolts to operate the machine. Always make sure that when you're touching the machine you're wearing safety gloves so that you don't catch your finger on the stainless steel. It's the same material that they use to make knives so it is quite sharp and yeah we don't want any accidents so lift it onto the floor stand. You can use two people or one depending on how you, uh, if you feel it's necessary or not. Attach to the floor stand using the clips provided and you're secure and ready to remove the transit bolts. So there's four transit bolts in your machine that you need to remove prior to use. Um, if you do use it whilst they are in, it could damage the machine and affect the load cell. So I would recommend absolutely taking these out beforehand. Um, there's two longer bolts here that you'll need your spanner to remove. And then you've got two finger tight Allen key bolts at the front here. Uh, one pushes, one pulls just to protect the load cell. And these ones help protect the spring loaded vibration plate and the body of the machine whilst it's in transit, hence transit bolts. So you use your spanner to remove the transit bolts. I have loosened these off previously, so you don't have to watch me using a spanner. Um, remove the bolt there like that. And again, you would loosen this one here. They're spray painted red as well, so you should be aware of which ones they are. And they do just fall out. Keep them safe. If you ever need to move the machine to a different um, different site or somewhere else, um, then yeah, or send it back to us for whatever reason, for maintenance, whatever it may be at the end of your year, then keep them because they are very, very useful. Um, so yeah, them two there. These two are finger tight Allen keys. The one with the washer goes in the big hole at the back and the other one is in the small hole to the left of that. And that's how easy it is to remove the transit bolts. So step number three, we're going to attach the hopper to the lid of the machine. To do so, you just undo the lid with the four clips on the side of the machine, lift it off and turn it upside down. And when you place it on your hopper, make sure that the plastic window is facing forward from the gate of the, of the hopper and that's just to ensure that it's the right way round when in operation. If not, the machine will not operate correctly and it may cause some frustration. So ensure that the gate is facing forward in line with the plastic window. You've then got four screws inside your bag that you can then attach with to the, the lid to the hopper just by simply screwing them in on each corner first and then on the other corners just to secure it in. So we've now attached the hopper to the lid using the four screws provided and um, before we put it back onto the machine and go on to the next stage, one check to do at this point is to just make sure that all of the terminals are plugged into the back of the computer at the front there. Um, so just to make sure that A, it's going to have power, B, it's going to weigh correctly, and C, the foot pedal is going to be working. And any issues with any of those things after transit, it could be that it's just been knocked out of the port slightly. So that's just one thing to check. 
There's two green ports, two white ports, and you can follow the wires just to make sure that they're, they're plugged in and connected correctly. And by the power source here, there is also um, four, four um, terminals that you need to make sure that they're all plugged in correctly as well. And um, yeah, it's just something that can happen during transit, it can come loose and it's just gonna panic you and make you think that your machine's not working when in actual fact, it's just a simple plug back in. So um, yeah, next stage is we're gonna take the hopper and the lid, place it on the machine, making sure that the gate is facing forward um, and this is what helps you to restrict the flow of the product and retain your accuracy and your speed. So um, yeah, the gate should always be facing forward. And then you're gonna attach it using the four clips, two on each side. And then from there, I'm gonna take you through the calibration of the machine because sometimes uh, it can get knocked in transit by a gram or two. And you will need to regularly, um, every month or so, calibrate the machine anyway, just to make sure that it's still intact which I'm sure you do with most of your other scales anyway. So yeah, here we go, this is how to calibrate. Okay, so the next stage of the setup process is to calibrate your machine, um, just to make sure that you're obviously not underweighing or overweighing any of your products. The last thing you want to be doing is um, giving away too much product or not giving enough. Um, so if you get 200 grams of weights, or you can use your, um, your check weighing scales to weigh out 200 grams of product, we're just going to enter, press and hold the green button on the control panel. You're going to enter two codes. Um, so the first one will be 808. And you can do so just by using the arrow, arrow keys up, down, left and right. Press the confirm button to then move into the next stage, which is 550. And then confirm. And then we're going to scroll down to so the machine displays F12. We're then gonna press confirm again. And now for the big machines, the Phil 2500, the Phil 5000, and the Phil 5000 Duo, what we're gonna do is display on the computer 0 to 100. And that's basically, we're gonna tell the machine exactly what 200 grams feels like. So again, you can use um, scale check weighted scales or actual 200 grams worth of weights. Always use gloves before you go into the machine. If you're gonna to touch any of the internals, just for safety, it is sharp, it is uh, the same stuff that knives are made of, so um, just to avoid any risk of contamination um, cuts and contamination within the machine. So you get your 200 grams of weights, put it into the internal hopper, where the internal hopper is mounted onto the load cell, and place them as evenly as possible within the machine. Leave it a second or two just for it to settle so it's not wobbling around and you're not gonna get an error message when you try and press confirm. And all you do is press the confirm button. The machine will then display F13 if you've done it correctly. You scroll up to F0 and press confirm again and it'll take you out and the machine will display 200 grams on the display. If it doesn't, it means it's been wobbled or you've walked around it and it's just sort of knocked it a little bit, so it would recommend doing it again until it does display exactly 200 grams there on the front. So to attach the foot pedal, it's really straightforward. It just slots into the hole on the side of the machine, and you push it in, screw it on, and that's it. So you'll notice that I talked about the gate on the hopper before, so just to give you a bit of advice on how to use it, uh, for the smaller weights and smaller sized particles, I would look at closing the gate off, and for bigger particles and larger weights, you want to allow as much access to the flow path as possible. Um, so I would look at opening it up. The bigger the particle and the bigger the weight, the more free you want your product to flow. And obviously the finer it is and the lower the weight, you want to restrict it as much as possible. And this just gives the machine the best accuracy and speed uh, across a lot of different variety of products. So whether you're a coffee roaster doing ground coffee and beans, whether you're a nut, nut company packing different size nuts, or you're a spice company doing different kinds of blends, whatever it may be, using that flow gate to um, cut off the flow to the vibration plate means that its versatility won't need any adjustment of settings whilst you're using the machine. It's just simple as moving the gate up and down I would recommend putting a sliding scale of one to 10 using a permanent marker on it. And that way you can then categorize your products based on the flowability of the machine. So thank you very much for watching and I hope this video has helped you with any setting up issues or any FAQs you may have. 
Um, if you still need to get in touch with us, you can do on plus four four one seven four eight three four nine one one two or hello at scale.co.uk. If you want to share any pictures or videos of you using your machine once it's up and running, we'd be more than welcome and please tag us on any socials um, and we'd be more than happy to share them as well for, with our audience. So thank you very much and we hope you enjoy your new machinery.